Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Indian Energy Exchange Q3 FY23 results conference call hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sumit Kishore from Access Capital Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Dorvin. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Access Capital, I'm pleased to welcome you all for the IEX Q3 FI23 earnings conference call. We have with us the management team of IEX, which is represented by Mr. S.N. Goel, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Vinny Sarlalka, CFO, Mr. Rohit Bajaj, Head Business Development, Ms. Aparna Garg, Head Investor Relations and Corporate Communications. We will begin with the opening remarks uh, from Mr. Goel, followed by an interactive Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to the earnings call for quarter three of financial year 2023. Let me begin by wishing all of you a happy new year. With me today on this call are Mr. Rohit Bajaj, Head Business Development, Mr. Vinit Harlalka, our CFO and Company Secretary, Mr. Amit Kumar, Head of Market Operations and Product Development, Mr. Sun Gautam, CTO, Mr. Samir Prakash, CHRO, Ms. Aparna Garg, Head of Investor Relations and Communication, and Mr. Aditya Wali. At the outset, India's commencement of the G20 presidency on December 1 marks a significant milestone towards undertaking a leadership role on the global stage. It also brings an opportunity for India to showcase its sustainability road, roadmap. On the economic front, India's post-COVID economic recovery continued with a strong H1 22-23. The, the country registered a broad-based economic expansion of 9.7% during this period and was placed amongst the fastest growing economies of the world. Recently, India's manufacturing purchasing managers index PMI rose to 57.8 in December 2022 from 55.7 in the previous month the highest it has been since October 2020. Similarly, the services sector in India did better than it has in the last six months, with the services PMI rising to 58.5 in December from 56.4 in November. With increased economic activity within the country, electricity consumption in India for quarter 3 of 523 stood at 343 billion units which is a year-on-year -year growth of 6.8%. Key contributors to this demand were increase, increasing consumption by the state, Rajasthan 16.4% year-on-year, Karnataka 12.5%, Gujarat 8.1%, Telangana 7.6%, and Andhra Pradesh 6.9%. Installed capacity in India achieved 410 gigawatts as on 31st December 2022. In line with the country's commitment towards arresting climate change and evolving into a net zero emitter by 2070, the installed capacity of for renewables grew to 168 gigawatt. The growth of green energy is expected to help India attain its vision of achieving 50% of its entire energy consumption from non-fossil fuel sources by 2030. In the quarter ended December 2022, the price of e ocean coal continued to be high while the quarterly average price premium declined from 293% to in quarter 2 to 242% in quarter 3 of this year, it was considerably higher as compared to 35% for the special forward EOS goal in the in the FI 2022. As a result of this, input cost for Zenkos continued to be high. Continuing high spot EOS and core price led to average clearing price in the day head market at 4 rupees 56 pesa in quarter 3, while lower from 5.4 in the previous quarter, but still high to provide optimization potential for discounts and open access consumers. 
During the quarter, coal production increased by 8.7 percent on year-on-year -year basis to 225 million ton, while coal dispatched to the power sector remained almost similar at 184 million ton compared with the same period of FY22. Inventory the power plant now stand at 13, 13 days. If improving coal inventory and further reduction in e auction coal prices is expected to result in a decline in power price on the exchange platform and provide further cost optimization opportunities to resource and open access consumers. This will result in higher volume on the exchange platform. On the regulatory and policy front, develop, several developments took place. A few highlights are in early December, the new ERC regulation, the new REC regulations for RE generators was implemented. The new REC mechanism of no flow price and fungibility between REC is likely to increase liquidity in the market. The trading of e is expected to start in this month. Recently, CRC made amendment to define a floor price for trading energy saving certificates, which is fixed at 10% of the price of one metric ton oil equivalent of energy consumed that notified by advisors notified by central government. The GNA regulations were notified in October 2022 and were partially implemented at the grid as the grid code is in the draft sales. The regulations are expected to be implemented before the end of FY23. Implementation of GNA will remove regulatory arbitrage which led to temporary shift of volume from dam market to DSC market and will be more conducive towards further market development within the country. Further, CRT issued division settlement mechanism and related matters regulation 2022 linking the DSM charges to the time block wise price discovered on the exchange. This will discourage discounts to overdraw under DSM and will lead to increase in the RT volume in the RTM market. All these initiatives will help further deepen power market in the country. Coming to IX updates, during quarter 3 of 23 electricity volume at 23 BU grew by 9% on quarter on quarter basis. However, electricity volumes declined 2% on year on year basis as, as compared to Q3 of FY22. Volumes were impacted largely due to supply side constraints led by high prices of e auction coal. REC volumes at 1.2 BU during quarter 3 FY23 witnessed a degrowth of 68% on year on year basis as compared to quarter 3 of FY22. As in quarter 3 of 22 had exceptionally high REC volume of 38.3 lakhs to fulfill the pent-up demand caused by a stay on REC trading by FTEL for almost a period of six months, 16 months. Overall volumes at 24.2 BU recorded 5% quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth across all market segments. However, on a year-on-year -year basis, overall volumes declined by 12% because of power supply constants. High price discovered during quarter 3, 2023 and high RSE trader volume in quarter 3 of FY22. In November 2022, IX filed a petition for introducing the high price they had market segments to enable generators which have high variable cost more than 12 rupees to participate in this market. We are expecting to start this market by February 2023. We continue to sustainability transition India's energy markets through efficient and asset light business. In quarter three this year, we incorporated a wholly owned subsidiary international carbon exchange. ICX, ICX is aimed to leverage opportunities that exist in the voluntary carbon market. The exchange mechanism will facilitate market participants to trade in voluntary carbon credits allowing for transparency and optimal price discovery. We are confident that ICX will go a long way in helping achieve India's target, to re target of reducing the emission intensity of its GDP by 45% by 2030 to, li to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The quarter also saw IX become India's first carbon neutral power exchange using market-based credible instruments to offset its carbon emissions. This will help IX members and participants to reduce their scope-free emissions by building a greener value chain. 
I shall not talk about developments at IPX. In quarter 3 of 523, there has been several thought developments at Indian Gas Exchange. IGX traded a total volume of 24.42 million MMBTU during quarter 3 of 523, which was a 568% year-on-year year increase. The growth was largely on the back of participation by major domestic gas, <coughs> domestic gas producers and an increase in the number of participants. During this quarter, seven members including RIL, DP, Exploration Alpha, and Vedanta Limited joined IGX. Recently, IGX launched Jixi, the first ever nationwide price index to reflect benchmark natural gas prices of India, for India. The IGX price index is developed with the purpose to derive a single price for the country <coughs> in line with the international benchmarks such as JKM, and we have <coughs> West India markers, TTF, etc., which are currently representative of the price of the respective coverage regions. Now I will enumerate some of the IGX financials during the quarter 3 of 23 During the quarter, profit after tax at 12.76 crore, witnessed a growth of 427% on quarter-on-quarter basis and 1437% on year-on-year basis. Efforts undertaken by IGX in the country, country's gas sector were also recognized at the Energy Award 2022, where IGX won the first and primary gas exchange initiative for the Gas Economy Award. It is not time for me to summarize the financial performance of the company in this quarter. On a consolidated basis, revenue for quarter 3 FY23 increased 3.1% on quarter on quarter basis from 113.8 crore in quarter 2 to 117.4 crore rupees in this quarter. However, due to decline in traded volume, revenue for quarter 3 witnessed degrowth of 10.3% on year on year basis. Consolidated fat at 77.2 crores grew 8.4% on quarter on quarter basis as compared to 71.2 crores in quarter 2 of 523. With gradual improvement in domestic production of coal and improvement in coal inventory, we expect a rationalization of power prices on the exchange and the volume is expected to improve. Since its inception, IX has grown with focus on customer centricity, innovation and technology. We continue to work towards building a sustainable and efficient energy future for India. In addition to developing new products such as HP Dam and ancillary market, we are exploring business opportunities in voluntary carbon credit space with the launch of ICX and also doing policy advocacy to create a framework for setting up coal exchange. We believe in the government's vision for a sustainable future for India, India's energy sector, and are committed to help the country achieve it. With this, we shall now commence the question and session. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from DAM Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is, uh, sir, how has been the traction in long-term duration market? I, I think we have floated two kind of contracts monthly and any single side diverse auction. Can you please comment on that? Yeah, in the long, uh, we introduced this long duration contracts in the month of July and uh, there is very good response from the market. I think uh, by now we have conducted uh, more than 50, 60 
auction but uh, since the price discovered in this auction is uh, on the higher side because of the supply side constraints as you are aware um, many of these auctions have not resulted into a contract and there are still we have done more than 1 billion unit transaction during the 6 months in this uh, in this segment uh, are we seeing any green suits in this particular segment I, given that you know we are entering into a summer season see invariably in the long duration contract transactions happen when the prices are competitive uh, and then distribution companies they get into a contract for three months six months to uh, have the power seasonal power requirement to meet the seasonal power requirement but the price discovery at the moment because of the uncertainty in the availability of coal and very high e auction price. Since the prices are higher, it is difficult to say uh, about the volume growth in this. But I can give you broad picture about this market. Almost about 50 billion unit of transactions are happening in the less than one year contract to the trading company. And this is the potential for this market. And uh, with the kind of flexibility which we have provided for this long duration contract, I'm sure we should be able to get a good large share out of that. So going forward, we will see I mean, how the growth happens in this market. And next okay. year, particularly, Government of India has fixed a very high target for coal production, uh, which is 1 billion ton for the country as a whole. And if that happens, I'm sure Coal, e auction coal prices also will cool down and our clearing price will also come down and then you will see good traction in this market, long duration contract market. Understood, sir. Secondly, on this IGX, uh, how much was the revenue a bit and pat for nine months? Uh, for Q3, you mentioned 12 crore. Is that number right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, during the quarter three, the total operating division was 18 and a half crore for the IGF in comparison to uh, around 5 crore revenue during the quarter two. And the 9 month number, sir? Yeah, for 9 months, the operating revenue was 27 crore uh, versus 5 crore for the previous year. And sir, profit number, sir, for the 9 month? Number for the 9 months is 16 crore. Okay, understood. So, so most of the profit has come in this quarter. Yeah. Understood, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mr. Sumit Kishore from Access Capital Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. My first question is, uh, there has been a slight uh, uh, easing of uh, supply side constraints, uh, but we have not seen a meaningful improvement uh, in liquidity on the exchanges so far. Uh, October was uh, uh, better in that respect, but then November and December uh, sequentially saw a worsening of liquidity and high exchange prices. Uh, January also the exchange prices so far are north of six rupees. Uh, so, you know, what, what is the sequence of events you expect uh, over the next few months uh, on the liquidity aspect and where do you expect, you know, how do you expect exchange prices to pan out over the next six months? Yeah, there has been significant improvement in the coal production in the country. Yes. But you know, when the crisis happens, always rationing is done. And this time, Government of India, what they have done is they have uh, increased supply of coal under the PPA so that uh, states they are able to get coal for running their power plants, running their power plants for the IPPs when they have the contracts. And of that, good part of the demand of the state is met by the project under the PPA. Uh, PLF of the coal based power plants increased almost by 6-7% as a result of that. Availability of coal in the market, which is the e auction market, is still low and e auction price is still very high. 
uh, I think it is uh, still about 240-250% of the administered price. And at these prices, the variable cost is 5 rupees plus. So generators are not willing to, they, they cannot sell power at a rate lower than 5 rupees 25 pesa, 5 rupees 50 pesa. And that is why our clearing price is still high. And uh, But I'm, I'm sure going forward, when coal production improves, availability in the Eoxon market is more. The Eoxon price, which was only 35% premium in FY22, it should come down to that level. And uh, when that happens, then you will see our clearing price coming down to 354, and the volume should also increase with that. So would that be a reasonable expectation to have over the next three, four months? Or, uh, uh, you know, um, based on how things are going right now, we expect that liquidity will be tight for uh, um, some more time. Maybe after August, September, this would come down because uh, March, April, May are high demand periods. And uh, during this time, even hydro and wind support is also not available. So there is going to be a lot of pressure on the coal based power plant. But after that, I think the situation should improve. Okay, and would it be reasonable to say that uh, uh, when exchange prices are high, uh, uh, it, uh, you know, given that states take this comms, uh, you know, requirement uh, uh, to optimize their power procurement, uh, C&I customers wanting to buy cheaper power, all this demand will get impacted and that could weigh on volume growth on exchanges like we have seen over the last, in the fiscal so far. Yeah, yeah, whenever the clearing price is high, definitely it is impacting our business because uh, our clear volume normally consists of three components. One is purchase by discounts to meet the demand. Second is the states which are located far away from the coal mines, their variable costs used to be higher. They used to back down those costly stations and purchase power from the market. And third is purchase of power by the open access consumer, industrial consumer, to optimize their cost. Now, with high clearing price, it is only the demand of the distribution company which is coming to the market, and optimization opportunity is reduced to a significant extent. And that is why uh, there is slight dip in the volume, clear volume, but I'm telling you, in spite of that, even for meeting the demand, the, the volume is still very, very high, and on quarter on quarter basis, we have seen growth with respect to quarter two, quarter three, volume growth is almost about 8.6% in electricity. So with that, I'm thinking, I, I'm sure quarter four should be better than quarter three. Got it. Uh, also, it was expected that, uh, you know, the, the volume uh, would, would shift uh, back to dams from DAC and uh, you would know, be uh, um, uh, bringing out the GNA regulations in October. So this issue around double charging of transmission charges, uh, uh, why has it still not been addressed? Uh, can you please explain that? No, no, issue has been appreciated by the regulators. They have already issued the GNA regulation where they have addressed this issue and there will be no double charging. Uh, only thing is that GNA regulations will be implemented after finalization of the grid board and transmission charge sharing regulations. These two regulations are under the, uh, hearing have been held for all these regulations, so they are under finalization of these documents, and once these regulations are uh, issued, then these will be implemented together. Because all these three regulations are interlinked. So we are expecting maybe from 1st of April this will get implemented. Okay. My last question is on um, uh, ICX. Uh, you know, in your uh, presentation, you have mentioned that by 2030, India will sell almost 300 million carbon credits. Uh, but over the next two, three years, you know, how do you see the opportunity shaping? What are the investments that you will do in ICX? And could you, you know, give us a more, uh, uh, you know, uh, a detailed view on the next couple of years, what will be the developments here? See, carbon market is a different kind of a market. And uh, we have just started this exchange. What we understand that the opportunity size is quite big, but first one or two years could be difficult period, difficult years for us. As of now, we have just incorporated the company. 
we are in the process of developing the technology platform for this and understanding the market approaching the buyers and sellers getting them registered so maybe by middle of this year we intend to launch this exchange and thereafter i mean let's see uh, because many corporates many industrial houses they have made their commitment under the esg to be carbon neutral and these targets are quite challenging so all of them to achieve these targets will have to buy carbon credits so and india is a large producer of carbon credits also and since it is a international exchange we intend to uh, interact with the international participants also so opportunity is good but uh, let, let us see how much share we are able to get out of that okay thank you for answering my question thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of sandeep agarwal from nareri investment private limited please go ahead sir hello hello uh, mr agarwal please go ahead yes yes, yes sir uh, thank you uh, so my question is currently 85.9% is our long term pta uh, can you can you please speak like a bit loudly <coughs> hello yeah yeah please uh, yeah so currently 85.9% is long term ppa uh, as per your uh, comment uh, and then after 25 years of completion it will be uh, no renewal so what is the uh, other option uh, with the uh, uh, other option uh, other option uh, 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 for the company uh, to option to sell the power other than exchange uh, my question is yeah i mean uh, the present companies who have long term pps after 25 years they are free to sell the power in the market and mm. then they can they have the option to sell this power under the bilateral contract maybe for uh, on medium term basis or short term basis but uh, exchange is the most flexible option uh, where they can depending because you know after 25 years the plant also get aged and their uh, performance also deteriorates slightly so depending on the availability of the plant they can best utilize the capacity to the exchange platform because we have both the air market and rtm market and we also have long duration contract so i am sure this participation of this platform should be more to the exchange uh and sir uh, you have any data uh, that after 3 to 5 uh, in 3 uh, to 5 years uh, what uh, will be the percentage uh, reduce 85.9% to what percentage See, as of now from the last 5 6 years long term contracts are not happening and demand is increasing every year at a rate of 5 to 6% so hmm. definitely the share of the long term contracts in due course of time will decrease and uh, purchase to the market will increase okay then um, so my next question is regarding the gas exchange approx 50% of gas imported by a short term uh, so what is uh, our exact market size in this and what is the main uh, trigger you think other than price to increase the volume in our uh, supply form See, in any market platform, on any market platform, the volume increases when the prices are competitive. And same thing holds good for the gas exchange also. This year, the volumes in the gas exchange increased because, for the first time, government of India allowed domestic gas with the ceiling price also allowed trading of that for the exchange, and that brought us good volume. But uh, and it was it was. lng trading was hardly any quantity because lng rate is very very high in the international market so import was less and the trading to the exchange was very less it was mostly domestic gas with a ceiling price and domestic gas from other sources going forward as and when the lng prices moderate they come down to the level of 5 6 dollar which seems to be the price earlier also and i'm sure when that price comes the lng board will increase and we will see larger volumes through the ix platform okay thank you 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Nerurkar from PPFAS Asset Management. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So I had two questions. One is basically from a business perspective. Uh, so you have introduced, you know, many new products in the past, say, few quarters. So going forward, what would be the revenue composition, you know, looking like? Say, if, if I have to order from a year or two from now, like, what would you want uh, from the revenue side? Like, how the product should be looking like? I couldn't get your question. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, so my question is, uh, you since you have introduced many new products, so the revenue contribution of DAM and RTM is supposed to be the highest right now. So say two years down the line, how would you want the revenue composition to be like? See, today, I mean, there was a time when DAM was constituting of 90% of our volume, and 90% of our revenue. Today, DAM is only about 50% of our volume. And RTM has become 26%, so taken together is about 78% DAM plus RTM. And in fact, DAM plus RTM is the most competitive market as far as exchange is concerned. So volume in these two segments will continue to lead uh, other market segments. But uh, we also expect long duration contracts volume to pick up in future. Uh, as I told you, whenever the prices, uh, the coal price come down in the international market and in our domestic e auction market, in the LDC market also, we expect uh, significant volume growth. So it will be very difficult to say how will be the distribution of volume under the different segments. Uh, that depends on the clearing price. When the clearing price comes down, then you will see large volume in the LDC market also. Okay, okay. The green market is another area with large renewable capacity addition. We should see good volume growth in this market also. So, uh, would renewals also be like a major component going forward in the dam segment, the green uh, dam segment? Yes, yes, green market, uh, it was only 2-3% two, two years back. Now it is, last year it was 5% and this year it is already 6%. So, I'm sure next year you will see green market going to be almost about 10% of the total volume. Okay, okay. Uh, and secondly, I uh, just wanted to know about the transaction charges which are under review. You had submitted your proposal about the transaction charges and it was under regulatory approval. So, uh, does that risk still remain that the transaction charges would, uh, you know, drop or, you know, would be half? See, hearings were held in the month of December and uh, order is reserved by the Commission, order has not been issued. So, till order is uh, issued, but it is very difficult to say what is going to be the final order. But uh, looking at what happened during the hearing, I think uh, we made our case and uh, we practically convinced the commission that uh, a two PESA transaction fees is the right, uh, uh, which they have, uh, the right number which they have also fixed in the regulations. And uh, probably that should happen. Okay. So basically from your point of view, you think that, uh, the, I mean, it would work in your favor? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, and just one last question. I just wanted to understand about the gross bidding mechanism, like that what implementation stage it is, or is that uh, too, is under regulatory approvals and, you know, it's under review. See, gross bidding is basically voluntary participation of the state through the market. States can sell the capacity which is at the margin, I mean, uh, uh, if the exchange clearing price is 3 rupees, then they can sell power from the power plants, which are less than 3 rupees, I mean, maybe from 275 and above. They sell in the market and buy power, whatever is required from the market. So you are selling in the market and buy from the market. In the turn, in turn, you are optimizing because your demand during the day is not uniform. So you optimize your power procurement costs to the market. But this kind of thing happens normally when the clearing price is competitive. Uh, since this year the clearing price has been very high, there was no opportunity for distribution companies to uh, utilize this cross-bidding concept. Okay, okay. Uh, 
that's very helpful uh, thank you so much i mean the, uh, these are all the questions i had if i have any further questions i'll get back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of nikhil from alliance bernstein please go ahead hi hi thank you for the opportunity i had two questions uh, first question was regarding uh, power derivatives uh, while we understand it's going to come on another exchange uh, but it has implications for ix as well uh, so wanted to understand if there are any updates on that front power derivatives have not been introduced yet because this will be introduced in the semi regulated exchanges uh, i think uh, nrc and mcx are working on this so but then there is a joint working group the joint working group has to um, approve the contract for the derivatives because you know in electricity we have a spot market also and the regulator wants to be sure that there is no adverse impact of those derivatives on the spot market so but i think uh, it is an advanced phase and uh, maybe in the next one or two months we will have derivative contracts in the market understood sir good to hear that uh, the second question i had was regarding rcs uh, you mentioned the new regulations coming into play in december uh, what did want understand that you know the regulation allows power traders also to participate in rcs uh, did that have an impact on december volumes and could it have an impact on future volumes on R for rcs i don't think because you know all distribution companies particularly they would like to do trading of rcs rcs only through a competitive platform so that there are no questions asked and uh, exchanges have been well accepted over the last 12 years that this is the competitive platform for price discovery and rc trading has been happening through this platform so i am sure distribution companies will continue to buy rcs through this exchange platform only and other open access consumers and industrial consumers their requirement is you know in very very small quantities and uh, they buy it as and when required basis so they should they will also like to prefer exchange platform because they know on exchange platform the fixed day on when, when the uh, transaction is going to happen so i don't see allowing trading companies will have any adverse impact as far as rsi volume is concerned but uh, let's see so far i don't think any transaction has happened in the uh, through the trading companies because it is almost about uh, one and half month over and nothing has happened got it thank you so much for answering my questions thank you the next question is from the line of bevam modi from ardeco please go ahead sir yeah uh, uh good afternoon sir so to uh, what would be the igx share in the total gas volumes of the country oh as of now igx share is only about uh, 1 1 and 1/2% only so it is just you know we started two years back so this would be based on the third quarter 24 million mmbt would be 1 and 1/2% yes and what would there be any so what would be the q3 profit from igx would be around 12 crores would that be correct yes you are right so what, what would there be any one offs in this current numbers because with this kind of volumes also would we be posting this kind of numbers so if the volumes expand further what kind of profitability can be expected over here are there any one offs in this current number on the profitability side no no this quarter volume is mostly driven by the domestic gas domestic selling price gas sold okay. by reliance and ongc and uh, they have regular supply of gas so i am sure their requirement will be to do to do sell of this gas on a monthly basis and they have seen that uh, exchange platform again is more flexible and efficient platform again here uh, the transactions have been very smooth so the transactions from these companies should continue and in addition as and when the lng prices come down the volume would should further increase okay so what kind of uh, would you would you so you are saying current base would remain around this levels and then volume increase will depend on further uh, narrowing down of lng prices would that be the right impression 
See, in fact, in the gas market, there are many fields which have been given to the private sector. And okay. there are many fields, in fact, presently which were auctioned in the recent past. In those fields, there is no auction, and there is no selling, selling, selling in their price. So, as and when gas production from those fields start, I'm sure they also, their, their participation also will increase on the exchange platform. There are many marginal fields which are coming up now. So, we, we expect good participation, and uh, this year, already gas exchange has done more than three times of what they did last year. We did in nine months. So by the end of the year, it should be almost about four times of what we did last year. So for next year, it will be difficult to give a number, but uh, certainly should be in the range of 50 million MMBTU. So what would be the quarterly overheads uh, at uh, IGX level? Uh, quarterly overheads is around five and a half crores. This this would mean uh, all admin expenses and salaries. Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, what would be the volume share in the core business of IEX, uh, that is the energy exchange? What would be the volume share of SEB on the buy side and the sell side in this quarter? Buy side, it is about uh, 88 to 90 percent between about 88 percent. On the sell okay. side, it is 65 percent. So distribution companies today are the major buyers and sellers. By mostly it is distribution company because uh, due to the reasons explained by Mr. Goel. Sell side also we are seeing very good participation from discounts because they are the ones who are getting more coal under long term supplies and they have they are operating their plant at higher PMF. Wherever they have surplus, they come to the exchange market and sell that off. Correct, correct. So, so I was just uh, trying to understand what you were saying with regards to the fact that when the prices are higher, typically you would expect the volumes to be uh, slightly hit because of the lower SEB participation. So, uh, what would be? Would you feel that the non-SEB uh, component of the demand and supply will be much more uh, inelastic to price movements? Would that be the right understanding? No. What we were trying to explain was. From the discom or SCB side, we get two types of buy. One buy is there to meet the deficit, which is price insensitive. Whatever is the price they want to buy, then buy this power and supply to the end consumer. Now, second part of buy is actually optimization buy. Correct. In the first nine months, the, the growth in the uh, overall electricity demand grew by 10%. Now, growth was so robust that there was so much deficit buy which led to prices being on the higher side coupled with the higher input cost and hence optimization buy was not happening. So the number that we have registered till now it is purely on deficit buy. The point we were trying to explain was as the supply will improve, improve as the cost input cost will go down, we expect more buy to come from same SCBs. Now this additional buy would be on account of optimization or replacement. Sure, sir. What I was trying to ask was the non-SEB volume, that is the volume from industries and other private entities, would that be remaining generally, would that be growing in a normal trend? Uh, I mean, uh, irrespective of the fluctuations in uh, power cost? No, no. That has gone down drastically. In fact, non-SEB volume today is only 10% because our prices are very high. As the prices will start to come down, you will see this number going up to as high as 30 35%. There is so much demand which is there, which is waiting on the sidelines, waiting for price to come down. Every day basis, these players are, these industries are placing their buy bids. But their bids remain uncleared because the prices are high. So this is additional over and above SCV buy. This quarter will also come as the prices will come down. It is highly price sensitive buy, which we get from industries. Okay, okay. Sure, sir. That's it from my side. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. We have the next question from Anshuman Ashit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, so over the past few days, uh, we have seen uh, the 12 rupees price cap being hit during the morning and evening hours uh, during many time blocks. So, sir, uh, so what is generally the view on, on, on this price cap? Will it continue? Will it be uh, changed because it is hurting the discoms a lot and hurting our volumes as well? <laughs> 
And do you see uh, with the uh, uh, coal, international coal price moderating a bit, do you see uh, supplies from uh, imported coal-based plants increasing and, and there, in, there being uh, some near-term uh, uh, relief uh, on, on prices? Yeah, price cap of 12 rupees is expected to continue for some more time. The CRC has already issued that this will continue to for the order. So which means that uh, they don't see, they don't expect revision of this upward in the near future. But let me tell you one thing. With 12 rupees price cap, we don't see any impact on the volume. Because whatever sale is available in the country, the marginal cost of that is much lower than 12 rupees. Even domestic coal-based power plants, there also the cost is, in spite of high of C option rate, is 5, 5 and a half rupees. Imported coal-based plants, the cost is about 6 and a half, 7 rupees. So 12 rupees is much higher than that. So all of them have incentive to participate in this market. So I don't see any impact on the volume because of this uh, price cap. Okay, understood. Uh, and sir, uh, for the nine months, um, so what has been the total exchange volumes and uh, how has been our market share? Uh, so could you give some uh, details on that? Exchange volumes have been, has been almost about uh, 60, 70 billion units, 70.7 billion units in the first nine months. Mm -hmm. And uh, our market share is uh, in this quarter, it is almost 92%. And if you take the full year, it is 89% electricity. In electricity. So is it fair to assume because the other two exchanges mostly have uh, term ahead contracts and because volumes there have increased and, and for DAM and DAM it has reduced. So once uh, DAM volumes pick up, our market share may revert to uh, the earlier levels. Let us first understand one thing, why that time volume picks, they pick up. If you analyze the volume trend on the exchange platform for the last 13, 14 years, the time volume used to be hardly 1 or 2 percent of the total volume cleared on the exchange platform. Because distribution, when the, there is enough liquidity in the, in the day head market and RTM market, they prefer to buy in the dam and RPA because that provides them a lot of flexibility. In this year, when there were supply side constraints, demand was more, many distribution companies preferred to get into the DSC market to ensure availability of power. So that is why the time volume increased. In future, with the increase in coal supplies, price moderating on the exchange platform, I am 100% sure that time volume will rather go down. We have seen in these nine months also, the months in which the clearing price was lower, the time volume was lower in that, in that month. So I don't see any reason for time volumes to go up. Okay. Understood, sir. And sir, uh, for FY24, so what is the growth that you are looking uh, forward to uh, in terms of exchange volumes uh, overall? Yeah, our growth is dependent on the market conditions. If GDP grows, electricity demand is going to grow. If electricity demand increases by 5-6%, that which means that almost about 50 to 90 billion units of extra demand in the country. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure good part of that will come to the market. But for meeting that demand, there should be enough supply also. And mm -hmm. supply can happen only if there is adequate coal supply. So, I mean, it is all dependent on these things. So it will be difficult to make any guess on that. But I can tell you one thing. If you take our average for the last five years, six years, our growth rate has been almost about 20% on GAGR basis. So it should be possible to achieve that kind of a number if uh, market conditions are conducive. Okay. And, and sir, uh, one final question. Sir, uh, you had mentioned in your initial remarks that uh, e-certs uh, trading will start in, in this month, is it? Uh, so, uh, so, sir, uh, what kind of volumes are you expecting uh, in that? ESAT, I think uh, the total volume of the ESAT for sale is uh, hardly about 40-50 uh, lakhs, 70 lakhs, and, but then the purchase obligation is for only 
35 lakh. So the size is very less in this. Okay. Okay. And uh, similar for uh, the REC for FY23. For REC. For REC. Uh, so, what's the kind of volumes? FY23. Yes. What's your expectation uh, for the uh, for Q4? We have already done 43 lakhs REC trading, mm -hmm. and uh, we should close this year with I think almost about 60 lakhs REC volume. Yeah. So, we are expecting another uh, 20 lakhs in next three months because these are the closing months, and majority of the buy is in these uh, ending months only. Okay. Understood. Sir. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Best of luck. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lavanya T from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So uh, I just wanted to understand if uh, once we get approval or uh, order from CERC on the transaction charge, uh, do we have any idea on the frequency of the approval which is needed or uh, is it only whenever a new product is launched? No, I mean, invariably these kind of approvals are once approval and thereafter if there is if conditions uh, change, if regulator feels that uh, there should be re-examination of that, then they can do that. In fact, in case of trading margin, yeah, the next best example is the trading margin. CRC had notified trading margin in 2010, and in 2020 they reviewed that and issued an order wherein they in fact revised the trading margin upward after 10 years. So it is not done on a yearly basis. Once this approval is there, I'm sure this approval is going to be there for a pretty long time. Okay. Uh, for yeah. a uh, so I just I was just checking because uh, for trading margin it was a cap and uh, explicit approval for each of the trading licenses was not required. But here with exchanges, along with the cap, approval was required for each of the exchanges separately. So here also, here also they are going to approve the transaction fees as a cap. That exchanges will cannot charge more than so many so much of pesa as transaction fees in the damn market so much better in the RTA market. Because if you fix the number, then between the different exchanges, they will not be able to promote competition. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got so here it. also they are going to put the cap, and they have already put the cap in the regulation. A cap of a cap on two pesa. Hmm. So I'm sure that number is going to come. Got it. Got it. And uh, with the, I mean, I just wanted to understand your view on the overall market. So usually during winters, the, uh, uh, I mean, overall uh, electricity demand comes down and supply is relatively better during this period. But despite that, the exchange prices are quite high. So uh, coal prices is the only reason, or any other change in the market, or that you are seeing. Uh, why so high uh, market prices even in uh, January? One is that demand of power in the country has increased. It has increased by almost 10% this year, which is again unprecedented. In the last 20 years, this is the first year where the electricity demand in the country has increased by 10%. Otherwise, it used to be at a rate of 4, 5, 6 percent. So that is one factor. And second factor is, I mean, coupled with this, there is unfortunately the Coal prices have increased in the international market because uh, we have uh, almost 20 gigawatt of that imported coal based capacity. That capacity is operating hardly at 30-40% PLF. So the pressure is on the domestic coal based power plant and that is why all these problems are happening. Okay, got it, got it. So with some moderation in international coal prices, do you see this improving in the coming months or uh, how do you see this uh, moving? I'm sure because the prices have already started coming down. Every month we are seeing 4-5% reduction in the imported coal prices and domestic coal price, e option price also is reducing every month. So in the near future, they should come down to the normal range. 
Mm-hmm. Got it. So oh, last question from my side. So we have uh, seen sell side uh, from uh, state boards, state electricity, these things, but 65% uh, now. So what, what this used to be earlier, like what is their share side uh, uh, in the normal year, like 2020? Yeah, no, distribution company sell used to be 30-40%. Okay. And generating company used to be 60-70%. But this year, since the distribution company states go more full under the PPA, so they had, they had more power at their uh, disposal. And, uh, you know, there are many states where the demand is in the morning and evening hours, but then they don't have, uh, they have very less demand during the night hours and daytime. So to keep the plant running, they sell power during the night time and the daytime. So, I mean, then there are states we have contracted capacities keeping their demand growth for the next 10 years, and they have today surplus capacity at their disposal, so they sell power from those plants. And since the price, clearing price on the exchange platform is lucrative, these states in the product in turn are also able to make some reasonable profit out of that. Got it. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. We have the next question from Ankush Agrawal from Surge Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So, firstly, on the IGF, so what would be the total traded natural gas in India uh, in a year, including a domestic so gas? So far, so far, the natural gas traded is almost about 36 million MMBTU. And uh, a very large part of it is domestic gas only. Domestic gas, you know, domestic gas has got two types. No, of sir, I'm asking the total Indian consumption, not what IGX is doing. Indian gas, total gas consumption in India is almost about 160 CMB, which is million cubic meter per day, 160 million cubic meter per day. And out of that, 50% is produced domestically and 50% is... Produced. So what, what would this be in MMBTU terms? Uh, Annual size? Don't have number right rough, now. rough number. Rough number would have number Right now, I would not like to make a wild guess on this. Okay. So, sir, uh, out of this, uh, you know, what would be the addressable opportunity for IJX, like the short-term traded gas, like which is traded from traders or, you know, bilateral deals, something like that? IGX this year is doing almost about 1.5% of the total of gas consumed in the country. Okay. So, but what would and, be the short term market and, size? And looking at the plan of the government of India, government plan mm-hmm. is to increase consumption of gas from 6.3% to 15% of the energy basket in the next 7 8 years. And they have created large infrastructure in the gas sector, like LNG terminals, gas pipelines are being constructed. So, if gas growth happens like that, I'm right. sure opportunity for the gas exchange is very, very high. And I always say that the opportunity for the gas exchange is as big as what we are doing in the power sector. So, yeah, that that is taken. But you know, any uh, like idea on what is the short term market say, like for in the Electricity, we have about 12-13% which is traded on the short term side. So, on the gas side... In case of power sector, long term contracts are almost for 87-88% of the demand. In the right. gas sector, long term contracts are hardly for about 70-75% of the demand. Rest of the okay. gas is under the short term, getting imported okay. or okay. sold in the short term market. Okay. So okay. That, that is what I was asking. Much higher. Right, right. Okay, got it. Uh, secondly, sir, on this carbon exchange that we are looking to start, so I believe this would be a global opportunity for I, I, I because you know carbon credits basically the uh, issuing agencies are global in nature, so this would be fungible globally. So are we targeting the global opportunity, or you no? Know, we would be restricting to you know carbon credits that would be issued and domiciled largely in Indian markets. No, this is going to be a Global opportunity, that is why the name of this company is International Carbon Exchange. Because uh, as of now, many European and American companies 
to comply with their ESG commitments, they are buying these carbon credits. So yes. buyers are more active in the international market, and we have on sell side, India is also producing many carbon credits. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, there is good opportunity for sell from the India, Southeast Asia countries and the American countries. So yes. we intend to tap all these sources for the carbon credits and buyers in the European and American market. Perfect. The idea would be to firstly, you know, act as a supplier of Indian carbon credits to the global market. You are right. 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 Got it. Got it. Okay, so that that was all. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arul Selvan from Independent Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Um, I remember uh, I heard that uh, from a long duration perspective, you said that the uh, current market size is about 50 billion units. Am I, am I right in what I heard? Right. Yes. Uh, so my basic question here is that how exactly are the current market players trading in this segment? If it's not really through an exchange platform, is there some other platform, or is, or is it just the traditional, uh, you know, uh, P2P or bilateral contracts way? Most of the trading in the in this market is happening through the deep platforms. There is a platform which is for uh, right owned by the government, right? If I'm not mistaken. But the reverse option happens for uh, price discovery. And most of the trading through the trading companies are directly by generated to distribution companies. Okay, okay. So now when when long duration contracts are uh, I guess introduced for let's say progressively longer durations, and right now we have if I'm not mistaken, six months, right? That's the longest duration that we have right now. Right? We so let's right say now, yeah, sorry. For up to three months. Three months, sorry. Yeah, talking to regulator for uh, Delivery. Yes. So now my question here is that suppose let's say in the future we get uh, you know the regulatory approval for launching contracts for let's say up to six months or one year or two years. Uh, do you expect these players to automatically shift to our platform, or do you think that the existing deep platform provides certain other advantages that are not available on our platform? See, shifting of the participants on our platform will depend based on the value which we provide. Mm -hmm. If they are finding more value to the exchange, they will definitely switch to the exchange. So we are trying to create value for them through the exchange platform. Mm -hmm. Number one value is that platform, these exchange platforms are flexible. You can give your requirement for doing your auction any day, and the auction can be done within three days time, two, three days time. And uh, we have very efficient system of uh, power scheduling, so we in fact ensure the dispatch and the scheduling of the power also, and also we do the complete financial transaction. We pay to the generators on daily basis, so that is a big USB of the exchange. Generators are willing to sell power at a price lower on the exchange platform because they are assured of the payment. In case of uh, deep contracts, they are not assured of the payment on daily basis. They in fact uh, get payment after the supply of power a month, they raise the bill and then after that it may many many cases it takes two, three months also. So looking at these kind of values, I'm sure uh, participants will be more active on the exchange platform. Right, right. And uh, just, just a couple of more questions. The first one I'm to the next question here is that are there any competitors uh, who are offering these long duration contracts for up to three months as of now? All the three exchanges are offering this. Okay, and and you said that the traction that you were seeing, that the lower amount of traction, uh, is that also across other exchanges, or is it across any? Is it only only on on our platform? No, I mean uh, volumes are happening in other exchanges also, mm -hmm. but I can definitely say that our share is more than their shares. Do, would you have a would you have a number for that in terms of what our market share would be on just the long duration contracts that have been recently introduced? No, because you know, as I told you, that the volume in this segment at the moment is not significant. 
because of the high clearing price right so this percentage and market share will be meaningful when the volume increases okay okay that's it that's my uh, i don't have any more questions thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was our last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comment over to you i would like to thank all of you for being part of this call today friends higher input costs continue to impact our volumes going forward with the increased coal production target for which has been fixed as 1 billion ton for the financial year 2324 we expect a reduction in input price lower clearing price on exchange and increasing optimization potential for this from and open access consumers and i'm sure this will support better volumes on ix platform ix as always remains committed to positively contribute towards a sustainable indian energy sector thank you thank you on behalf of access capital limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines